Welcome back to Civil Wars. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on the chain store paradox. I should start off by saying that this is a bit of a misnomer. The chain store paradox really isn't much of a paradox at all. However, I'm calling it that because that is a convention that predates me by a couple of decades. I don't think it's very fitting, but nevertheless, we're stuck with it. In any case, the phenomenon works something like this. I want you to think about a chain store, something like a Walmart or a Target, a business that has multiple locations all across the country. And I want you to think about a single challenger in a single city thinking about starting a business that will directly compete with the chain store for profit. So this challenger can either stay out or it can pay an investment and enter the market. Now, the chain store would like to be able to threaten the challenger with a price war if the challenger enters the market. The chain store essentially wants to say, hey, challenger, don't enter the market because if you do, I'm going to start a price war. And that's going to be costly for me in the short term, but I'm going to be willing to do this because in the long term, this is going to drive you out of business and it's going to allow me to keep more money. So challenger, do not enter the market. It would be silly for you to enter the market. However, it might actually be the case that the chain store is very weak. If it's a weak chain store, it might actually go out of business itself in that particular location if it starts a price war. So as a challenger, your decision whether to enter the market or stay out is really dependent on whether you think the chain store is strong and actually capable of starting a price war or weak and is going to concede to you and allow you to gain some profit. So if the chain store is likely to be weak, you're going to enter the market because you suspect that your investment is going to pay out in the end because you're actually going to make some profits from the store that you open up. On the other hand, if you think that the chain store is very likely to be strong, you're going to stay out because you think that you're ultimately going to go out of business if you enter the market. And so why pay the investment to enter the market when it's not actually going to get you any profits at all? So with one entrant, things are very intuitive, things are very straightforward. However, with multiple entrants, multiple possible challengers in multiple cities, things change drastically. The strategic concerns grow far richer. So I want you to think about the situation with 10 challengers and 10 cities, 10 different people thinking about starting 10 different businesses in 10 different cities that are all going to directly compete with the chain store. Now, as a weak chain store, under normal circumstances with just a single challenger, if the challenger were to enter the market, you would concede because it's not profitable for you to start a price war. However, conceding with the first challenger actually sends a strong signal to remaining challengers. This is essentially waving a white flag. You're saying, hey, future challengers, I'm weak. If you enter the market, I'm going to concede to you. So really, by conceding to this first challenger entering the market, you're essentially signing your own death warrant. You're ensuring that all future challengers are going to enter the market, and you're going to have to concede to all of them. So things are really bad for you if you concede to the first challenger. You as a weak chain store might actually start a price war against the first challenger, not because it's actually profitable for you to do that. It's going to be very costly for you to start that price war. But the long-term benefit for you is that you're going to deter future entrants, future challengers from entering the market in other cities. So the result changes as follows. If you're a really weak chain store, you're still going to concede because it's going to be really unprofitable for you to start a price war in any city. On the other hand, if you're just a standard weak chain store, you have this incentive to bluff strength with a price war. The first challenger enters, you say, all right, well, you know what, I'm actually weak, but they don't know that. Future challengers don't know that, so I'm going to pretend like I'm strong by starting a price war in this particular city. And of course, a strong chain store is going to start a price war regardless, because that's just what it wants to do. It's very strong, so it can actually start these price wars effectively. So we see that there's a big difference here. Again, if you are a really weak chain store, you're conceding both times. But if you're this weak chain store with one entrant, you're conceding. With multiple entrants, you're going to bluff strength because you're worried about what other future entrants might do in response to you conceding in the first place. So the key result here is that the amount of future competition determines how chain stores will respond to a challenger. If there are more future challengers, more potential entrants, you're going to see more price wars because of this incentive to bluff strength. On the other hand, if there are fewer challengers, we're going to see fewer price wars because there are fewer incentives to acquire a reputation of strength. Very simple, very straightforward. And what we're going to see in the next lecture is how this applies to multiple, perhaps rebel groups in a single country thinking about starting a revolution or thinking about starting a rebellion and how the central government might respond to that. Hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you next time. Take care.